Well, everyone, we finally hit 3,000 follows on Twitch. Thank all of you so much for your support. Um, on Twitch, on YouTube, all of the channels, you guys are awesome. Uh, you guys are basically the entire reason that I stream in general. For my tutorial videos, all the content I put out, it's all for you guys. So I really appreciate all the support you guys are showing me. When I hit 3,000 followers on Twitch, I said I was going to go ahead and come out with a YouTube video. It would be kind of like a AMA, ask me anything, where people in my Discord server could lay out a bunch of different questions, and I would go one by one through them and answer them. This is a, a fun little thing to do that's kind of outside the norm. So I wanted to go ahead and throw this video together for you guys. If you feel like sticking around, know a little bit more about me, have some fun, take a break, and once again, thank all of you for all of your support for all this time. I really appreciate it. I couldn't be here without you guys. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, first one. Komodo Wagon asks, what's your record for tacos in one sitting? Um, I would say three tacos. I honestly don't eat tacos very much. I'm more of a burrito guy, but probably three. Um, other than that, I, I also prefer soft shell tacos because I have a fear of like crunchy things in my mouth because one time a Dorito got stuck upside down like inside my tooth and like when I closed my teeth it like the triangle part of it went straight into one of my teeth it hurt really bad but I'd say three times thief why do you like me better than crack a J because you stole my heart Z-Storm Games, when was the first time you realized you wanted to be a content creator? Okay, so honestly, I never actually wanted to be a content creator. I just wanted to do esports things, play video games, and compete at a really high level. Um, the content creation kind of came as a side thing to me when I was like, you know, I want to do this, but I also want the competition of the games I play to go up, so Population 1. I wanted to make tutorial videos for everybody to also raise their skill level, better for people for me to play against, better overall for the community. Um, as of, I, I guess, me being a content creator kind of started when I got into that because I realized, wow, I can help out a ton of people like this and I might be able to actually sustain a portion of my rent by doing it. So I guess that would be kind of where that started. Who is your favorite member of Vortex? Probably Eevee. And if it's not me, fuck you. Crack J, what was the first game you ever played? Mine was probably Zelda Ocarina of Time on the N64. I actually still have my original N64 and a bunch of different games for it. That was probably my first one, and then I had a couple of Mario games on the Game Boy. But even now, I'll go back and play Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time from time to time. That game's just so great. When did you start playing comp VR games, and what led you to play VR in the first place? Okay. So I started playing comp VR games probably two years ago. I started with Pavlov, um, Pavlov VR. I joined a team called, I think at the time it was called Nightmare. And Cracker J was the um, leader of Nightmare. I think I think it was Nightmare that I joined. He swapped to a different team. I tried to follow him back forth, blah, 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 blah. But I think Pavlov VR was the first game. It was about two years ago. Competitive VR is in a kind of weird spot right now, and I hope it grows a lot, but we definitely need to grow the community a lot more before we can get to that point. So hopefully we can grow the community a lot more. I'm super excited for the future of VR. Population 1 is a great step. Larsenauts is making some strides to be better of a game than it was, and when it has an update that's coming out, or probably came out by the time this video comes out. So I'm super excited for a lot of different things there. And what led you to playing VR in the first place? Okay, so VR in the first place... I was working towards getting my pilot's license um, in real life. I'm still a wolf in real life, Android wolf in real life, you guys don't freak out. But I was working towards getting my pilot's license because, okay, so my dream job overall would be to be a like a fighter pilot, but in space, so space jet pilot, which that do job doesn't exist, right? So I started working towards getting my pilot's license. When I was working towards getting my pilot's license, I realized that at the place that I was actually training, they had kind of like a kiosk, not really a kiosk, but they had a computer that was set up where you could actually work towards getting hours towards your pilot's license by just sitting there on the computer and using the throttle and the sticks and everything. And everything was pretty, you know, a lot safer, obviously, but everything is also really accurate on my on the computer. Um, I ended up buying flight stick, pedals, joystick, everything you need to do it at home. And I started by playing Elite Dangerous, not in VR. 
And then after playing Elite Dangerous for a while and watching some videos on it, I figured out you can play in VR. And that was kind of the cliff there. I just went to the Best Buy and I bought an Oculus and I hooked it up and then I played VR for the first time and Elite Dangerous is my first game. And then from there I was like, VR is pretty cool. Did Beat Saber, did Super Hot, and then figured out about Pavlov and then Comp. And then we already went over the rest of that. What was the first VR game you ever played and why, Ghost? So mine, as I just said, it was Elite Dangerous, and the reason was actually to start getting experience towards being a better pilot. What's your favorite thing about being a streamer? It's you guys. It's being able to kind of stream a game, hang out and chat. You guys come by the chat, chat, um, talk around, make friends, see people come back to the chat. My favorite part is just to help people and to communicate overall. So when people come back to my streams or chat, it means a ton to me. How many hours do you have in Pop 1? Yes. Lame question. How are you doing? That's not a lame question at all. It's always good to check on people. But I say that I'm doing pretty good. We hit the 3,000 follows. Uh, I'll be doing a stream. I think by the time this video goes live, I'll probably be live doing the stream. But I'm doing relatively good overall. It's um, been a pretty stressful for me. I've gone quite a few days this week and the past week without any sleep at all. But it's doing something that I enjoy doing. I just hope that I can get to the point where I can make it more of something that I can actually sustain and make a living doing. Bruh asks, what's 2 plus 2? Toast. Frigg says, what's your favorite Sabaton album? I will go listen to all of them right now, and I will put my favorite one on the screen. Jared says, have you eaten today? Well, I was it lasagna. I uh, after you were canoeing down a river and a wheel fell off, how many pancakes would be in your doghouse? There would only be waffles in my doghouse. How would you keep pancakes in a doghouse? That's stupid. Who made your model? So it's actually an individual named Jekir who is in my Discord server, who you can ping just from my Discord server, and they do a really good job. Um, they're really fast at responding to everybody and um, helping them out. I can actually put their Twitter link probably in the description of this video for you. And how much did it cost? So VR chat models are complicated in terms of how much they should cost or can cost based on the complexity, how many emotes it can do. You know, do you have a good reference sheet? Do they need to make it from scratch? Mine, I didn't have like a valid reference sheet for it. Um, and I didn't have like anything, but this particular model, I'm not gonna reveal the price of it, but I can go over general prices for you. The way, and you can make a, a guess uh, as to which one I am. General VR chat avatars, the way that they work is if you just have, you can go online and find a base model for a bunch of different ones. A Nardragon, some protogens, um, all sorts of different species. You can find base models online for usually somewhere between $15 and 70 bucks. And you can mess with the models and the textures from there and kind of make it your own. But from there, you can commission someone to make a custom one. Usually any sort of custom one, if it doesn't have any special features, is going to be right around $300. And then if you do have a bunch of different special features, depending on how many features they are, if you have a reference sheet, you know, I'd say not having a reference sheet adds probably a hundred bucks because they need to design the whole thing. And then depending on the amount of emotes that yours can do, um, there's going to be all sorts of different prices that you can add. I can rip my heart out on this avatar. I can give it wings. I can actually change the hue on it and change all sorts of different hues. These are things that I can't do on stream um, or can't actively easily switch unless I'm playing VR chat. Um, but just cool things that you can do. And it's all pretty neat. What is your name, address, and social security number? All of these questions are kind of personal at Wolves. I'm going to go ahead and let um, Draco's X answer that for me when we get a little bit farther into the video. And he should be able to help you out. Cold Chili says, how many people do I need to murder to join your team? I think if you murdered some people, I probably wouldn't want you to join the team. Um, we're actually against murder. This we just do pacifists on every game whenever we can. But in all actuality, um, the team is open to anybody that we think is going to be a good fit, going to represent the team well, just a super positive energy, and looks to helping out the community in any way they can. If a chipmunk stops eating chips, does that make him a holy man? Draco's X. 
Finally answering the question for you attacked by wolves. I found the model laying outside of Arby's. My full name is Smoochie Tree. My birth certificate is a coupon for a dollar off any RB sandwich. My social security is number, number, number two. My pitbull ate all of my credit cards. My address is any and all Arby's in Sweden. I also live in the VR Arby's Discord server. Um, you guys can try to join the VR Arby's Discord server. It uh, is it's very hard to find. Also the famous Japanese underwater Ar Arby's. That's right next to Godzilla in case you had any questions. He is a member of the Arby's council, but not an Arby's master. I was not granted the right or the rank of Arby's Master. Um, maybe one day they will allow me to be Arby's Master. What is the story behind your Sona and how did you come up with it? I'm still changing things around, but the story behind my Sona in general is just a creature that doesn't know why it's here, doesn't know why it exists. It's part robot, part organic. Um, the heart inside it actually belongs to its sister. And that is to remember it, or to remind it to feel. So I have a dissociative disorder called dis um, depersonalization, which makes it feel like I'm always dreaming. It really sucks. It helps me stay calm at all times. So I try to, I represent that by being a character that is mostly robotic, because robots don't have feelings, um, and kind of wouldn't process things the same way. And then the heart reminds me that, yes, I should feel, yes, I am human. Like it tries to kind of ground me a little bit. Story behind the character in general is a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the short version. You can always message me for the long version. Sub or Dom, I've always been a Subway fan. I used to be a fan of Domino's, but Subway, now that I've realized I'm more lactose intolerant, is kind of what I'm leaning. In terms of sexuality, I'd say that I'm more dominant, and that primarily, well, I'd say that I'm more of a switch. I, you know, I could do either. But the thing with that is everybody's freaking lazy, so I end up being a Dom anyways. Got really good at it. Baby Yoda says, what is your favorite food? I would say that my favorite food would probably be steak. Um, just cooked really well or garlic mashed potatoes. Garlic mashed potatoes are amazing. Now, in terms of sweets, Milky Way is probably the way to go because of the caramel or ice cream. Just chocolate in general. Holy Hamburger says, when will the onion plush release? Now, I would love to come out with some sort of plushie for this thing that people would be able to buy. My stream needs to be a little bit better for that, but we might get to that point at some point in the future. So if you guys keep supporting me, it's definitely something that I would want to do. Um, yeah. Holy Hamburger says, when did you realize you were a furry slash had the mindset of one? I don't think that furries have any different mindset than anyone else really. Um, you know, there's preconceived notions of any group, but it's just a hobby that people have in their spare time. Some people decide to like football. Some people, people decide to like soccer. Some people decide to gamble or whatever your hobby would be, right? Swimming, working out, triathlons. Or is just one thing that people decided to do um, because they enjoy doing it. It is their escape from reality. Holy Hamburger, if you could add any weapon into Pop-1, what would it be? I would add a Kraber, like the Apex Kraber, and I would make it so that I could penetrate walls. Right now at the high level of comp, um, the Seiko is super useful, or the S85, very useful. Um, because of the damage output, but the op, there's not really any reason to use the op. Now, if you added something like a Kraber into the game, you made it so it was like supply drop only, um, but you made a really powerful sniper that you gave like five shots to, I think that would be awesome. Something like a bow and arrow. Um, I think bow and arrows work really well in VR. I'd like to see something like a bow and arrow. That would be really cool. Sperry says, we all know whatever you say happens, so Samachi is big bucks going to add a buff to the CX-4. CX-4 got a buff. If you, uh, the fire rate was increased, I think that was season one, it was actually increased by quite a bit, and the gun became pretty viable. But all you need to do with the CX-4 to make it viable is head peak. If you want to really know how to make the CX-4 viable, you're going to have to go talk to Toyko, because he was the one who managed to use that in the competitive level and make it work. I, that's a question for him, not me. Ducati Red says, did you ever think you would make it as a streamer when you first started? Completely understand if this... Uh, info you would like to keep private, but would you be able to share a ballpark of how much money you make streaming? I don't make very money or very much money at all streaming guys. It's something that I do as a hobby. I probably like when I started I was working a full-time job 160 hours a month, you know 40 hours a week and I would still stream for over 50 hours a week Like I was working 90 hours in total when I started doing this um, and right now like back then I was probably making like a quarter for every like seven hours that I put into it. So it's something that is very hard to get started. It's very hard to get a following and um, get anything going. 
It's not something that I thought I would ever make a living doing. It was something that I wanted to do off to the side. I'm taking a big risk now. My job, you know, they let me go back in April and I'm trying to see if it's something that I can actually make as a living now. Um, it's Things are looking like it might be something that's possible, but VR is one of those markets that hasn't been tapped into yet. So I'm still trying to figure out how to make that work. Even the VR devs for the games, you know, Population One and Larsenauts, they're like, okay, we have this cool game. How do we get people to play it? Because not everybody has a VR, right? Quest 2 was super important as much as people hate Facebook was super important. Um, but we all run into the same sorts of things as streamers and we're wondering, you know, can we make it actually doing this stuff? In terms of how much I make now, I'm probably not going to share any sort of actual money with you guys for how much I make. But the general numbers I'll give you for YouTube is for every thousand views you get on a video, you make at maximum probably like five bucks. And then in terms of streaming, um, you know, Twitch subs are cost five bucks. I get 250 of that. That's actually taxed. So we make maybe $2 of the actual every time there's a sub. I'm not going to get into the, the super big numbers for you guys, but it's not a lot, guys. Like, it's enough to barely get me by, but it's something that I've been doing as a passion project and not as something to become big at. You know, esports, that's great because if you can make it big as esports, there's some money involved in esports. So that would be something, you know, if VR esports ever gets big, that'd be something really cool. Are you kicking Kraka off Vortex? Are you joining if I kick him off Vision? Maybe we can make a deal. Deluca93 says, why did you hide you were so damn hot this whole time? Yeah, I don't think I'm too bad looking. I think I'm pretty, you know, maybe a little bit above average. But in general, I wanted to make sure that I can make it as a streamer or as a content creator with my content and not my content, right? Like... I really wanted to make sure that as a furry, as myself, you know, all of the possible things that could handicap me, I wanted to make sure that people would still like me for exactly what I was doing there. If that's something that gets revealed in the future, I do plan on doing a face reveal and um, all sorts of things when I hit Twitch Partner. That's quite a ways away. I got to have 75 average viewers to hit that. But it's something that I want to make sure that I can actually grow and have good content before I do that. Now, as much as people will search for me on OnlyFans, I won't confirm or deny anything. Ender says, should there be a pump shotgun added to Pop 1? And Arky adds revision says, should they bring the pump shotgun back to Pop 1? So if for anyone that didn't know, there was a pump shotgun in the original version of the game. Um, it was then replaced by the DT-11. I think the pump effect could be really cool in a VR game, but I don't know if it works well with the way they have it set up because all the reloads are very straightforward. And they wanted to probably make sure the guns felt different enough where they actually felt unique. So if they did a pump shotgun, they'd probably need to change what the reload of probably the Seiko felt like um, or some of the other guns. I'm not sure if it would work well in Pop-1. I'd love to see, you know, a pump shotgun in Pop-1 or, you know, remove the DT and re-add the pump shotgun. If that's something uh, they can do, something that we don't realize as gamers is how much code goes into specific aspects and what adding one thing might break. But it could be cool. Attack by Wolf says, did I miss a Sumashi face reveal? What made you aspire to be the number one furry hot tub streamer? I didn't aspire. It was just bestowed upon me. I, it just happened. I didn't ask for it, but I was granted number one furry hot tub streamer. And uh, I'm going to keep that rank. All right, everybody, that's all of the questions that were in my Discord server for now. I might do another one of these in the future, depending on how this video did. Go ahead and leave a comment down below for, you know, if you like the video, if you have any other questions. If I do another video, um, I might actually look in this comment section to see if anybody else has questions that I might be able to answer for you all. Let me know if you enjoyed the video or if there's anything that was weird or surprising to you. And other than that, thanks again, guys, for the 3K follows. I'll probably be doing my 30-hour stream right now, so step on by the Twitch channel. And other than that, I hope you all have a great rest of your time on YouTube following that algorithm. Beep boop.